All right. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, tonight, what we're going to talk about is um, last year when in March we started with uh, um, COVID and the whole downturn of our uh, industry started then. And we all rushed into, and for the next six, seven, eight months, we did something. And some of the stuff worked and some of the stuff didn't work. Um, so what I want us all to contribute, and I would like to hear from everybody to give at least one thing, and I'm going to call you guys out. Um, what I would like to hear from you guys is um, something that you did last year that you figured out, man, that didn't work. And what am I going to do different this year so that I can get a different result? Um, so I want to go around the table and um, in the beginning, I'm going to just open it up for the table, but uh, think about uh, what is something that you did and it just didn't work. And the, the second part of the question is what are you going to do this year different so that you don't get the, uh, the same results? So it's kind of two questions and um, the table is open. Who wants to go first? Uh, well, I'll go first. Cool. Um, so uh, what I did last year that I refused to do ever again is I was in debt up to my eyeballs. Um, we had it, it, our, our percentage of income that went out in payments was just off the charts. We had truck payments. We had equipment payments. Uh, uh, it was it was it was just too much. So um, that's what I've done. For, for a few years now. So I spent this year and just rallied every nickel that I had and just did whatever I can to pay, pay it down or pay it off. Um, and, and then I'm going to go into 2021 with very little debt. And, and so, um, you know, if another COVID hits or something like that, uh, we're not, we're not, you know, looking at each other saying, well, we just can't afford to pay anything anymore. So um, that's, that's been what we've been up to over here. Can I ask you um, to pay your general expenses? Do you make enough money with what you've done uh, to pay your expenses, or do you have a job um, that you do that help you to pay the, the expenses, or how? What, what did you do? So yeah, so once COVID hit, I went and got a day job, and the day job's enough to cover all the all of uh, of our living expenses and. And then what we made over the summer, we were able to bank enough to carry us through the, um, you know, the, the winter months until we can get back to springtime. Mm -hmm. um, so just definitely just, just hustling and just, and, you know, as, as, as well. yeah. Yeah. Uh, anybody can speak? question for um, Jim? Hey Jim, how much did it kill you to, to go get that day job? Um, yo, dude, it broke my heart because, because I just jumped full time into the business the year before. And, um, there's nothing like eating crow because everybody in this room, we, we all know, um, that, that there are a million skeptics out there and, oh, it'll never work. And, and, you know, so, you know, taking the day job was, dude, that sucked. It, but you, you know, you, you know, we're all doing what we, what we have to do. I know Ishmael's was, was running groceries. Like what, you know, guys are, 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 are door dash and just trying to do whatever can to make some extra cash. So, um, yeah, dude, that sucked. And, and the employer that you have now, um, how did you explain to him, uh, why are you wanting the job? Does he know it's just for a period of time or well, what is your plans for that? No. So, um, I read a book called uh, Quitter by uh, John John Acuff, um, and what he recommended was he recommended that you be very transparent with your employer and say, hey, you know what? I'm using this job. I have my own business going. At some point, I'm going to leave. And 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 his idea was that if you're if you're upfront and transparent and fair with your employer, that they're going to treat you well. Um, I did that with my last employer. I was really transparent. I was really, you know, hey, I've got the business going. And 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 it was, it didn't work like the author had suggested it would work. What ended up happening was 
everybody, or not everybody, but people were bitter towards towards the idea. They weren't near as supportive as I'd expected them to be. So now whenever the business comes up at the new company, I always say it's my wife's business and that I just kind of do it really part-time. They have no idea that my plan is to quit at some point, um, but I'm, I'm really holding my cards tight to my chest. I don't, I don't, I don't want to have to, um, I don't want to have to explain my motives to, to people that just don't quite understand. So they, they don't know anything. But I, I have a suggestion. Please, Cobus, do not post these. <clears throat> do what? Do not place this recording in YouTube. <laughs> Why is that? Why is that? Gene, explain to him. Nah, dude, I, 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 I'm good. If I get caught, I get caught. That's what, but uh, that's just my strategy. And, I, and the only reason I'm really saying it is because I'm sure somebody's going to watch this video and, and maybe they're in the same position I'm in. And, um, you know, maybe they can learn from me. I mean, I mean, what everybody does every week over here is just, it's, it's really awesome because We know we're learning from each other and trying not to make the same mistakes the other guy made. Well, that's the whole goal of what we're doing, right? Yeah. You know, what are you doing right now? You know, what are you working? So I, I, I'd said a week or so ago, I, have a, I had a free life in, in uh, project management for land construction, land development. So it's, it's a, uh, something that I've done for a long time. So it was, it was easy to jump jump back into something uh, that was able to cover the bills while COVID hit. Is there any way that you can take advantage of that job that you have right now for your company? Like, uh, you know, more employees, you know, when you, when you go out or your season start, maybe people that work for you right now can, you know, jump on work for you part-time. Is there, do you see that there is any opportunity there? I, I, I do. I do. And I've used, I've used that, that avenue of, of, Hey, You know what you want you're looking for some uh, some part-time work on the weekends you know come over and give me a hand yeah no absolutely it's a good it's a, it's you're, you're out and about so it's a great way to network mm. cool for you man all right uh who, who's next um what is something that you've done last year that you don't want to do this year and what are you going to do this year Who's next? Mike, do you have something? Sorry, I have to see. Sure, I'll go. Um, next one. Well, Mike. I know Mike James. Well, it's actually Michael Grant. I don't know why it says that, but um, one of the things that we kind of messed up earlier uh, in the year was we didn't have a system initially. Um, so we were basically uh, using pen and pad and Um, I, I would literally have like things like this all around, you know, just trying to get everything put in one place. And, and I joined ERS, not even, I didn't even really do much research. I just, I went with the reviews and, um, so I joined ERS and it kind of put everything in one place for us. Uh, even when we didn't even have the, um, I guess the orders to kind of make it make sense for us to have a system, it just, Uh, because I'm also a police officer, so I needed, I didn't need the business to be a huge uh, headache for me. So um, with the system, we were able to learn it at a, at a pace where it was uh, easier for us because we didn't have any orders um, because of COVID. Uh, so I was able to spend a lot more time in that system and make a lot of mistakes um, because we didn't have the orders. So then when we started getting slammed, during the summer after everybody kind of got sick of COVID and they just said, forget it, uh, we want a water slide. Uh, we were able to um, manage the demand without um, getting killed. So I think, I don't think I'll ever um, go back to not having a, a system to keep us organized. So um, tell me, what is the one reason uh, you would give new people that says, I cannot pay $100 a month or whatever it is to have the system. What, what would you advise that person? One good reason why they should sell out the hundred bucks a month. Uh, one good reason is uh, basically peace of mind. Um, for us, you know, when people say, Hey, do your research on, you know, like, let's just say, for instance, we're going to buy a new slide. 
well, all I have to do is pick up, pull up my reports to even see if my business demands another slide. Um, you know, I don't have to, I can connect the system to my phone. So I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, if someone's calling me and, hey, do you have something available? I can just look on my phone and see on my calendar, hey, yeah, I have something available or no, I don't. Um, it's just it's just way easier, especially when you have a two year old, um, you're married and you have a job, you know. So that was uh, the one thing that really saved us this year. Yeah, awesome. That's a good one. And next, who wants to go next? Emmanuel. Sure, I'll go next. Um, I think I'm going to kind of <clears throat> go back to what Michael was talking about in regards to ERS. Um, if you don't have ERS or any system in place, um, I would highly recommend looking into it because it's, it's definitely a game changer. I mean, the amount of things you connect to ERS is, is, um, is enough is to enough like... To like to repay what you're paying the monthly service. I have analytic connected to it. I have my Google candle calendar connected to it. And it, it just, it's, it's like a little assistant you have that is super cheap if you think about it. And so yeah, get, get a system in place. Um, one thing I will be implementing this year is documenting my process. So anything that is labor intensive or anything that is online, documenting it and having it on paper just in case I ever need to come back to it and do it again. Uh, for example, like XML sitemaps on my website, I never documented how to update or how to properly do it. And since I went back to this and wanted to get it indexed on Google and stuff, I have it all documented now. So now if someone needs to learn about it or if I need to redo it myself, I can easily just look at my notes, do it again. And I want to do that for like labor, like folding a jumper, um, setting up a little tent. Um, basically anything that can be documented, I'm going to document it from now on just to have some um, easy access to it. And that's, I think. Um, oh, also um, no seasons, um, know what jumpers go out certain times and anticipate it. Because last year I was too scared to invest on some water slides and I regret it forever because I missed out on all our money. So don't be that guy. Don't be me last summer. Can, can you tell us where, where are you from? I'm, a, I'm Ismael's neighbor. I'm in the Bay Area. Oh, you're in the Bay Area. So did, when did you start? Uh, I've been in business. Well, my father first started in 2015. Um, I took over two years ago. And you didn't have any water slides? I had, I had what I had one, but then I had water slide combos as well. So I have like five, I guess. But now this season I'm going in with like eight, 10. So I'm prepared. Good. And did you, you used to do backyard parties? Is that what you did? Yeah, I was always doing backyard parties. Um, I was getting a little bit into corporate, but I'm not there yet. So I'm, when this COVID thing happened, I just fell back on backyard again and I'm doing that. But I'm still trying to... Um, raise my average ticket all that too well raise your average ticket don't settle for 150 dollar tickets or 180 aim for the stars cool you've got a good a good few ones to work on yeah um, <laughs> a lot <laughs> Thank yeah you. you're welcome next al let's go with you what do you say and i talk a lot in this meeting so but uh you know i think the the like I always say, you know, the best, the best decision I think it was, you know, increase my collaboration. Uh, Alex Reed, by the way, I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm super happy that he's here. This guy is, is a, a huge inspiration for me. Uh, you know, we, we share one of his, you know, I share with him, you know, one of his uh, uh, warehouses as well. And, you know, and I think, you know, increase the, the collaboration and, and working with people, you know, uh, bigger than you, same that same same side uh, of your company you know uh small guys you know have been you know uh, an amazing experience for me you know uh having people you know that have going through 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 the things that you have going for for example you know alex 
uh, we share the same market. Um, um, man, so many times that this guy, you know, uh, uh, you know, even even you know, with my with my uh, with my uh, finance, you know, he sometimes he called me, hey, bro, relax, you know, do this, do that, be careful, you know, where you're spending your money, whatever. And when you open yourself, you know, to to work with people in your market, you discover that there is a there is a uh, you know uh, you know so many great people in your market that 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 is that is amazing. Things that I regret this year, wow. Uh, I don't know because this year, you know, I jumped in, you know, uh, full time. Uh, that's crazy, you know. Here in the uh, gym, you know, his situation, my was, you know, totally the opposite. You know, on on May. I resigned to my job and I said, you know what? Forget it. If I'm going to get broke, I, if I'm going to go broke, I'm going to go broke with style. I'm going to go, you know, now and then I jump, you know, uh, full time uh, into the business. Um, and the rest is history, man. You know, uh, I'm so, so happy and so blessed, you know, that I made the decision that I, that I make. Uh, by the way, if I, if I say that I do not regret anything, that doesn't mean that I did not make mistakes this year. I made a lot of mistakes. And, you know, people like Corey, you know, Ismael, Alex, you know, they know. And sometimes they call me out. Hey, bro, be careful. And Coase as well. Uh, you know, Coase, be careful there. And, but, you know, it is what it is. I think, you know, that whatever you do, you know, uh, you have to you have to own it and move forward. And, I'm, this is here, and I'm, I'm in 2021. Uh, my goal is, you know, to continue growing my, not my company, if not my network. I want to know more people. I want to learn from more people. Uh, man, you know, it's so funny because sometimes uh, we receive in our warehouse uh, guys with uh, with five, you know, bank houses because they want to come they want to see you know the warehouse you know i'm, I'm sure i'm sure you know uh, a warehouse that is that is huge it's, it's not a normal warehouse for for everybody it's something that is really big the operation is amazing there um and they come you know uh, uh, and it's really funny how much i learn from 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 people that are, that are that are in the position that i was you know two years ago why because they they have these new ideas they cash faster you know some the things that are happening and they are so hungry that that you know uh, push me and motivate me to to continue with that drive that you know that that every time you have to wake up and say i have a goal in mind <laughs> and i have to do it it's not about you know i have a plan no you have to make it happen how you have to figure it out you know i'm start asking people i'm seeing you know how you're going to do it but you you have to do it at the end of the day it have to be. It have to get done. So you you set yourself up for this one. Um, I want to know what was the biggest mistake you made last year. You said you made quite a few. So help us out and let's learn from you. Uh, give me one or two of the biggest mistakes that you feel like you would have liked to okay. do different. I I think you know uh, this year. I don't call it you know a mistake if no. Uh, it's a learning uh, lesson. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. A lesson, uh, a business lesson. And is that that I was really, you know, under the impression that we do not have seasons here in, in Florida. I was always thinking, oh my God, we are in the, you know, we are in, we are in the, in the hot weather. So we always are going to be, you know, moving, 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 moving. Because I, I saw, you know, uh, I, I was, you know, looking at my numbers on December last year. And they were they were basically my best month, and I was saying, you know, ah, November and December are gonna be amazing. But when I went deep inside the numbers, I noticed that yes, they were really good, but it was because of the corporate events mm -hmm. that I have, you know, in November and December. And my biggest lesson, you know, that I that I that I that I you know I I, I learned from it was so you have to you have to know your numbers you have to go inside the numbers it's not about only to see oh this was my best month it's to is to learn the why why that was your best month you know what are what were those units you know that really you know uh, move you what are, what are those units you know that that they are not moving um this this is really funny Today, I, I, I get into an agreement with, with a guy in, in our market 
to sell my first water slide. Three years and a half already. Okay, for me, you know, I, I have three years and a half in the business. And for me, it, it, it has been so tough to let go that freaking water slide <laughs> because it, it's sentimental. It, it was my first water slide. And maybe it's funny for everybody else, but for me, no. Uh, and I have to, I have to learn, you know, that hey, you know, you can, you have, you cannot get attached to the equipment. It's about the bottom line. It's about, you know, which equipment is making you money and, and, and move on. You know, this equipment, you know, get, get, get to your hands, make you money. Okay, move on, move it, move it, move it. So, I so are you? Um, did you sell it to replace it with something else? Yes, that's the idea. Definitely. You know, my wife wants to buy the same one because we, we make a lot of money with that one. And, uh, you know, right now it's not in the, base, the best shape. Uh, but, you know, I, I, want to, I want to get something, you know, similar, but, you know, try to offer something a little bit different at the same time to, to our clients. Is it one of your best sellers? It has been my best seller, you know, for, for the last, uh, for the, no, you know, this year, you know, uh, it, it was different, you know. I I, I bought so many uh, water slides that others, you know, uh, uh, went on top. But yes, it had been, you know, my my best seller for the first uh, uh, two years and a half. It was my best seller, and this year, uh, you know, made me a really good money. Yeah. Okay. Should I buy it again? Buy it again. Everybody say yes. Asking your question. Yep. Yeah. I I think everybody say yes by multiples that's that's a, you know what that's another option uh, we we're, we were thinking about that as well you know my, my biggest seller this year we were thinking about should we buy another one of that one because that that thing you know didn't stop so you know yeah. learning you know every 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 situation is a learning opportunity correct um, Russell using you next uh, give us your um, um, something that you learned last year and what you're not going to do this year? Well, I'm going to learn that uh, I need to do something. This whole, all of last year, we just kind of sat around and hoped that it would get better. But this year, we're uh, we're going to go after it a little harder. Didn't do much at all last year. So you um, you do bigger events. Um, so maybe you can talk from that um, side of it. Uh, and I know you did struggle because that's the big, you, you did big events. You didn't do any backyards. Um, and um, uh, um, so this year, especially the first six, seven months, we still going to be in the backyard business. So are you planning to um, buy some equipment that you can do backyard parties? Or do you think you're going to wait it out until the, the bigger events are starting um, up again? Now we're going to buy a few water slides. Um, we've got a few pieces, a few bounces, a few combos that we can use for backyard um, naturally. So we're going to we're going to have to go after that a little bit. We just can't sit around and wait for the big big jobs to come back. They might not come back for two or three years. Who knows? Mm -hmm. So are you going to totally? Pivot, or is you just going to test the water? Um, what, what's your thought process? Well, we're just going to test the waters. Um, I don't want to go in debt. I got Jeff Kelly over there that's got, you know, he's got the market wrapped up. Oh, are you two in the same market? <laughs> we're not too far apart from each other. I, if I could live off his scraps. Don't give him any tips, Willem. <laughs> Well, he's here every week, so he, he's definitely looking for something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I'm always looking. Yeah. Can, can uh, I, I, I can tell you, I've learned um, every time something uh, from somebody here. And um, so for me, it's, uh, um, it's just amazing because we're a bunch of people and uh, all you need one every night is just that one thing that somebody says, and then you take that and you uh, do something about it. And that's why tonight would be a good, you know, everybody gives their um, uh, thing and um, it has to resonate with somebody else somewhere else. And um, 
So um, the next one, who, who, who wants to go next? Ismail, let's hear from you. Ismail, there you go. So, so here's my failure. So because we were corporate the last couple of years more than we were backyards, I wasn't ready to uh, to to be a backyard guy. So that was a failure. I just, I wasn't ready. Another failure, I'm going to give you two of them, was I kept buying stuff. Um, I I took every dollar I got from the events I had, and I just, I had to become a backyard company. So now we have a bunch of water slides. We're good there now. I did something bad over the last three months, so because now we're making money as a backyard company, even though we're down a lot, um, I was taking advantage of companies that were going out, and I got a bunch more corporate stuff even though I shouldn't have had uh, just because like, Oh, I'm out of business. I got this stuff for sale. So if COVID goes away tomorrow, we're going to have a killer year because I have a crap load of residential pro uh, backyard stuff now and I have even more corporate stuff. So I don't know if that's a win or a bad, or a bad thing, but I kept buying corporate stuff as people were, were going out of business just because it was dirt cheap and brand new. All the guys at Basa Varayapa, they sold that stuff in June, July, August. And then some of them toughed it out and going into winter, the people that had the brand new corporate stuff, they said, here, I'm done. So I'm that asshole that bought a bunch of stuff from people that didn't need them anymore. Uh, here's a win. And here's a win I'm going to do, even though I have three people that are local to me. And normally I don't disclose a lot of stuff, but we took our suggested add-ons and it's been doing killer for us for the last couple of months. I took my suggested add-ons and I turned them into required add-ons. So literally my customer, because now my customer's all moms, it's all backyards. She's got to be like, after she gets her jump, she's got to say it's either a popcorn or cotton can or a snow cone. Connect for a giant Jenga or a bean bag or, uh, with corn or whatever it is, right? It's like, you literally have to say, no, I don't want this. No, I don't want this. No, I want this. And I'm looking over our numbers over the last couple of months and looking at Google Analytics and our bounce rate. I'm not losing them at that point for people, for some people, because I know there's a couple that don't know what Google Analytics is. It literally tells you everything about everybody on your website. It tells you how long they're on there, what page they leave, where they bounce to. So I, 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 kept, I kept my eye on that where people leaving because now I was forcing them to choose. Because I wasn't asking anymore, hey, do you want a cotton candy? It's now like, which one do you want? Cotton candy, popcorn, or snow cone? Do you want Nerf? Do you want laser tag? Do you want uh, water tag? Do you want this, 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 or this? So that's been working for me. And my bad one was I kept buying corporate stuff because people just sold it really, really cheap. So Isma, you, you are always, you know, super creative, uh, you know, in, in everything. And that is a really clever way to do it. But uh, do you know how long take your clients to finish that process? I understand that you are not, you know, uh, losing people and that, that surprised me and, you know, I'm super happy for you. But do you know how long is that process? Because now you are forcing them to... I am. Click more. Um, I don't know if it's changed much because I may have done it now as a required add-on on ERS, but I have always, and I just said this to Corey about an hour ago, oh, Alejandro, I've always said that I know my customers' needs better than they do. So I've always said, here's what you need. Now I just put it in a selection process. Which one of these do you need? Which one of these do you need? Um, I'm thinking, I don't know, 10 seconds? It's literally three questions. Do you want this concession? Do you want this game? Do you want this add-on? Yes, no, yes, no. And I'm looking at my orders, dude. They're getting much better. Our ticket's going up over the last couple of months. Do you know how many of your clients, you know, choose something? You know, in percentage? No, I, I don't know. I don't know how to figure that shit out. That that will that will be a great data to see. How do you figure that out? Because the bounce rate's not it's not moving. The, the needle's not moving forward, so I'm not losing them by asking. Okay. How would you figure that out? I don't know. Maybe maybe. Oh shit! Not right. I thought you knew. May, maybe Quick question. Seen, yeah. Maybe uh, so, oh, 10, are you my local? 10, shit! My locals are here. Both of them. All three of, of them. Out of ten customers, how many uh, click an add-on? Exactly. And you, you know, 75%, three out of four. Out of 10 customers. Okay, yep. cool. Thank you. Yeah. See, now they're going to, now these guys are all going to do the same thing I was talking about. Well, no, I mean, uh, well, I'm going to try gonna ask Follow up. 
Is it, did you see a change when you went from suggested to required, or was this just implemented out of nowhere, the required add-on? Out of nowhere. So you I didn't just, do suggested first. You didn't do a, a A B test on suggested nope. and required. Nope. Because I know my customers. I've, I, I've had the same customer base for 10 years. Um, I will always have the same answer. I feel that I know a lot more about my customer needs than they do. They don't know what the hell they need. That's just my right. opinion, though. You, you just, you know, why do you think that you know your customers better than uh, they do? Your, their needs? Because I've had them for 10 years. Because it's the same damn market, physically the same market, the same people, and and the kid that turned ten now I've got their neighbors, now I've got their friends across the street. It's the same people from the same schools because our thing is huge on referrals and just getting everybody out there. So I throw a big enough um, net out there, and one school I will have forty kids, and they may be you know not on the same damn block, but it's I don't know, they're not very different. I I don't I don't have ABC level customers. Are the same type of customer. Uh, most importantly, they are not planners. So they're they not. That's they what I've always told you, dude. They don't know what the hell they're doing. I do. I do this for a living. How are you going to tell me what you need? I know you need a table. I know you need a power cord. I know you need this and this and this. You, I, when you get a cotton candy, I know the other crap you need. You don't. They're not planners. You know, it, Ishmael, I'll agree with you. I, I think one problem that we fall into as owners is we go through our checkout process and we go through our website on a daily basis. So it really gets old and repetitive to us. But if you think about our true customer and how many times they're on our website, it's nowhere near close to what we are. No, two, so, three times so a I, year. I, I do agree. I, you know, I, I don't agree with some of your other stuff, but that's okay. I, I really think that what you have implemented is neat and I think whenever we're updating our website, we, we really need to remember that as well, that, you know, our customers only see it once, twice, three times a year while we're on there every day. Cody, but what do you, can you, can you elaborate in this? Do you, do you think sometimes us as a owners, you know, miss too much with our websites? Um, you know, I think we've had the talk before and I, I think us as owners, um, kind of go off of the advice of other owners when it comes to our website, when the reality is we're not reaching out to our target market and asking them what they think. Yeah. Is that, you know, like, and, and don't get me wrong, don't, don't confuse you know, the long checkout process with going through and you know, him requiring you to check no to a couple more boxes. I, I, th I think what he does is really genius. It's clever, um, yeah. Or how he, he does require it, mm. you know, and it, it's almost, you know, we, we, have, we have to treat our websites as e-commerce platforms anymore. Um, and and I, I think that does a really good job of it. I, I still don't agree with all of your questions after that part though, but. Corey, that's, Corey. That's um, another roast. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, after last week's ERS training course. I hope you got rid of all of them. All of them, dude. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I was honest. I learned a lot. <laughs> I know plenty of people learn, but I learned a lot too. So I sat back and I, and I said, All right, I'm, a I'm, I'm, a, I'm a customer who's never been to my website before. So yes, Kari, I changed a crap load of things. <laughs> Ishmael, the only, the only, I mean, you've been big on, you know, all those check boxes that at, at one time, Done. ERS, so a lot of, a Bye. lot of us have, have talked about putting on their checkbox, checkbox, checkbox. You're like, yeah, hey, get rid of those. And this kind of, to me, this kind of brings that. And if your bounce rate isn't going up and you're getting all those sales, it's hard to argue against it. But that would be my one concern would be, you know, well, now if you're forcing them, quote unquote, forcing them to get a cotton candy machine, well, let me check with my husband and see. Well, no, 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 no. They don't, they don't have to get one, but they have to decide. See, I used to do this in sales when I used to sell high end audio video. I'm not, I know what you need. So most of the time, my customers get an add-on anyways. So now I'm just yeah. asking which one assuming of those. The, assuming. But yeah. you can say no. I don't, for, yeah, I I don't you. force you to get one. So it's that's four a, options. That's probably a little less yeah, than, than making them check that checkbox. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. It, it really is, Jeff. Um, I, I think it's a lot different what he's doing. It's almost like when you rent a car, if you, in his sales tactic, if you rent a car, when you're checking out, they... Yeah ask you you know what level of insurance do you want they never really tell you you don't have to get it 
They just right. ask you what level you want. And then you yeah, want to there. get it. Well, no, you don't have to get it. Oh, okay. I, I, know, I know that's kind of a general comparison, but yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, know I, mean, so. I don't think it's the same as those boxes at the end. Uh, is, is, are you put, are you, are you putting that actually on the contract or you're just making them? No, it's on your checkout process from the beginning. When you add a jump house, it's going to ask you, do you want a popcorn, cotton candy, or snow cone? Which one? And then you have an option of, no, I don't want one. Okay. Yep, go and play with me. With his, I'm um, going to. I'm going to go. I'm going to use a stolen card and rent <laughs> something from his mouth. <laughs> so that's what I did. That's working for me for the last couple months. Um, and I kept buying a bunch of co corporate stuff, which I shouldn't have, because now I've got a warehouse full of crap that's not moving. But it will. It'll be there. Yeah. Okay, Jeff. Um, oh, you just got on the phone there. Corey, why, why don't you go next? I'm sure. So, so realistically, and it's going to sound stupid, but one thing that we are doing this year that we haven't done or that we weren't doing last year is we're actually scaling back. Um, you know, we, so we were, I don't want to say we're fortunate enough, but we kind of, um, our employees kind of came and went this year. Um, nothing COVID related. We were actually uh, lucky enough to keep them on and somewhat busy through the whole pandemic and whatnot. Um, but it's actually, you know, being slow, we've actually realized all the excess fat that we can cut off of our bottom line, um, you know, and, and realistically kind of the stuff that was costing us more money to do. Um, so we've, we've really honed into a, a certain area. And I, I think we're in the process of truly scaling back and actually um, going a different business model than we would have, um, you know, had we continued uh, as we were pre-pandemic so last year we were in a grow 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 you know take over take over um you know more people more staff and this year it's it's nowhere close to that and truthfully i, I don't even if you know we we go back to normal so to speak i'm not sure that we're going to even go back to that route so so can i ask you um i mean i'm sure you um you, you check your profitability, um, did it go up? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's really tough to tell. Um, so, so the reality, I have a 16 year old son and uh, we have one more part-time worker. So the reality is it's either me and him or my son and him that go out on the truck. Mm -hmm. So I, I, don't, I don't think we have enough data but we've definitely maximized every truck and we only have one running. So, you know, we, we've now maximized every truck that goes out Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then we've also kind of moved over to the mindset of if an inflatable goes out Saturday, but it makes more sense to deliver it Friday and pick it up Sunday, that's what we're doing. Mm. So, so d definitely with, without actually a, you know, looked at the numbers, I, I can't imagine that the profitability didn't increase some. The, the thing that I really think is going to hurt us this year is that we, you know, and, and our PPP loan was actually just forgiven, but I, I still think that's going to kind of hurt us that we did hang on to those employees um, when we really should have just kind of shut down and, and I don't want to say not taken business, but just taking what we could deliver ourselves. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, well, that was a decision everybody had to make, but I think when you probably made the decision was when they gave you the eight weeks and not the 24 weeks. And uh, so you were working in that eight weeks because my bank in the beginning will also said, okay, you've got eight weeks. Um, and I just decided that, um, I'd rather pay the 1% because we were dead. I mean, and if you don't have money coming in, you can't pay <laughs> payroll. It's just the way it works. For uh, sure. Yeah, for sure. And we, and we actually went off of the, you know, the, the eight week period. So um, we exhausted that. So yeah. I, I definitely think that looking back, I, I wish that we would have just closed shop and, you know, kind of wrote them. I don't want to say wrote them off, but Looking, I, th I think that's tough now just because we see that they left and they're, you know, unfortunately not around. They made it through all those easy weeks and they're not around today to the now work, but. Yeah. True. All right, who's next? Kelly, Jeff. 
my one regret for last year was about three days before everything shut down. I had the state of North Carolina come out and uh, inspect all my inflatables. So I got to I got to write them a sixty nine hundred dollar check. Good for them. Yeah, right. So, um, and I say that because I mean, when you're only doing the backyard stuff, I mean, you still have insurance and all that. But I mean, no, nobody. Yeah, whatever. You can interpret it how you want. Um, you know, again, being in the backyard party, you know, we're down like everybody else, but had the best July we ever had. So we just kind of. It's ironic. I wanted to be. I wanted to get bigger, like russ is around here i mean he, he does have a, he's got a great business and, and has most all the he's helped me a lot along the way and and learned about you know i have to take care of 1200 1400 people a year to do, try to catch as much as he you know he has just a few jobs and, and deals with bigger events so i aspire to do some of those too but luckily we were still in the backyard area so um I feel I feel pretty fortunate for that. So that's the that's the good. Nothing that I really, nothing that I really did. Um, I just feel like we were we were placed in a decent decent uh, area. Give us a lot of time on the downtime. We've worked a lot more on the website, and um, so I, I can't say that I had any big wins because we were down thirty some percent for the year. But that's all I got. Now tell me, um, this year you need to do inspections again in March. Uh, what does the state Hi. do? What are you going to do? Because uh, I'm sure it's coming up again. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to until um, until I see corporate stuff. You know, open them back up. I mean, I, there just isn't any need. I mean, when you go to someone's backyard, there's no state inspector showing up at someone's backyard in fact it's even i think by the book it probably needs to be inspected but i mean i think there's there's a big gray area there whether i mean let's be honest the inspection is to make sure your equipment's all fine whatever and you're you're dealing when you're dealing with public events you're dealing with all walks of life i mean if you're going to the backyard of somebody's house i mean you're it's a controlled environment it's, a, it's all people that know that who's you know that they're going to be there um so yeah again i'm not going to I'm not gonna. I, I'm not gonna activate that to start the year. I'm kind of gonna wait and see how the year plays out and see if any commercial stuff is going to be done. The only the only bad thing with that is, you know, well, no, it isn't the bull. The the rock walls have to be inspected, but the bull, the bull. That's the weird thing. The bull doesn't even have to be inspected to go out. I mean, it has to be insured, but it doesn't have to be inspected. So that's crazy. Anyway. So you're, you're in Texas, um, if I don't do my inspections, the state is all over me and send me all kinds of letters and they're going to close us down and whatnot. Um, does your state do that at all? Or? No, they, it, it's gotten a, a little easier as time has gone by. I mean, the website's still antiquated and it still stinks, but they it used to be it was fly by the night and you can tell them you had insurance and they come out and inspect you. Well, now you have to, to get inspected, you have to have your insurance company send them on letterhead, the things you're inspecting on their letterhead and say, yes, these things are insured. So they won't even come out and do that unless that's done, but they don't, they don't chase you. Um, in fact, stupid enough, they've changed it to where they want you to do it by January 1st, which I don't think any of us do. You know, it used to be, uh, you know, March or April, which I think most of us all adhere to now. But I mean, they've changed it like four or five years ago. They changed it. And they wanted everybody to it, it run. The inspection runs from January to 1st to December 31st. But yeah. I mean, who in the right mind gets those things out in January 1st around here? You know, um, but no, it, it's not. It's it is not. It's not like that. It's um, they do not Alexa. chase. They do not chase after you. You're going to you, you're Where? the one that has to. Um, initiate the content. Yeah. Okay. I wish it worked like that here in Texas. Um, Ian, uh, give us your um, um, uh, two things. 
Well, I started with just a 13 by 13. So I would have started with a combo instead and made a better margin throughout the first part of uh, my startup. So that's what, that's probably the biggest thing I would have changed because I just, I, I didn't know that much about it whenever I was getting started. And um, I kind of just started it with a little side money. But um, now that I've got that going, I think what I'm looking forward to for the next year is I'm now on ERS. So I'm looking forward to not having to uh, email rental agreements and whatnot to get the, all that stuff done, which is kind of nice whenever you can see the little S and have it signed. I think that's fantastic. So I went from my 113 by 13 bouncers and now I uh, have the sixth one on the way. So I'm pretty happy about that for, um, I guess I started around March. So I feel like that was pretty good growth for a side hustle. And uh, hopefully within the next year or year after that, work on putting it towards a full-time job. So you still have a full-time job, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. I still work full-time. So th this is all uh, my extra work. Yeah. All right. Cool. Jaina, I'm interested to hear what you're going to say. Sorry, I had to find the unmute button. Um, I should have been thinking about this and I, I wasn't. So our, probably the best thing that we did um, this year is, I think it's a combination of things. We used, uh, we advertised for the first time in like eight years or something crazy. So that was huge for us. We moved our warehouse closer to our house. Um, so it's a more centralized location and bigger. And then probably our biggest mistake, um, yeah, probably employees, you know, just giving people the opportunity to, you know, walk all over you or call in with no repercussions and, you know, trying to find the balance uh, with employees, basically. So what is, what is one thing that you did with your employees that um, can counter with them walking over you? Um, you know, we, <laughs> that's still, it's still our, our yeah, Let's hear that one. Come on. Come on. Speak up, Dana. I know, right? Tell me how you really feel. Um, you know, we just, I feel like we get, we have one driver. Well, we have a couple of drivers, but our driver that's been with us the longest, he's an older guy and he does a good job, but he's like the biggest baby ever. Like he's 51 years old and he's like worse than my teenagers. And so it's hard to like, reprimand him and you know that kind of stuff like I tried to fire him and then he like called me crying within like three minutes so that I think that's probably been my biggest struggle is just you know the balance of going back and forth with him and trying to figure out you know do I just cut my losses I mean he's consistent he shows up to work and all that kind of stuff but he's overpaid for you know his job description and so I, I just go back and forth with that. I mean, I st still today I'm going back and forth with that. So I think that's my biggest challenge, you know, from for now. Let him loose. I know, I know. So what are you going to do different this year? Fire him. <laughs> Probably let my husband fire him. Um, <clears throat> And I am going to be more, well, first of all, I'm going to not hire anyone that I know. So that was, he's like a family friend. So that was kind of, that was a big no, no. Like I should have that don't ever do that. That usually blows up in your face. Um, so I think that's why it's been hard to fire him just because of that, like attachment. But um, this year I'm going to not be so nice. That's, 
to my employees. I mean, nice to them, but not so like friendly, you know, like more professional and, you know, no emojis and that kind of stuff when I text them or talk to them or whatever, just very, you know, stern and have higher expectations uh, for them. I, I'm sorry, Yana. I, I think you, you are, you are a lovely person. You know that I love you a lot. You know, you, you are a great person. And every time that you talk, you are so nice that I don't think you're going to be able to change that. I think there's a difference between being nice with people and be friend with people. You know, you can be the nicest person, but at the same time, you know, I always tell everybody, don't confuse my, my kindness with weakness. So don't, don't get confused. I'm super nice, but at the same time, these are, these are my expectations. And that's it. I don't think to try to change you because I think that that is what attract, you know, people to you. You are an amazing person and you are in a fun business. So, but it's, it's just make a prestation and that's it. I don't know, that makes two cents. No, I agree. I, you know, I, that's always been like a struggle. I like, I like my guys to feel like they're, you know, our friends too. I mean, we have, a very friendly business. So I want that. I have the, you know, that kind of relationship with my customers. They, you know, they love us and they think of us as, you know, people they know instead of somebody that they're doing business with. And I think that's important. So I try to have that same kind of relationship with them. It's just, you know, like drawing the line and setting expectations. You know, we're going to start doing like monthly, um, you know, just question and answers like, you know, what are you going to start doing? What are you going to stop doing? And what are you going to, um, you know, continue doing? So things that, you know, everybody can improve on. And I think that'll be, that'll be huge for us. I mean, we just, 2020 was such a crazy year with growth and, you know, trying to navigate backyards only and not having the events and that kind of stuff that there wasn't just a lot of time to really hone in on anything. I mean, it was like a constant chaotic mess basically. So we are working on best practices and stuff like that now to hopefully make, you know, whatever comes of this year better. Okay. So, um, um, Great. So you, you have something to do this next week or your husband's got something to do. Um, Anai, uh, is that how you spell your name? Or say? You actually said it right. Yeah, Anai. Well, you kind of said it right. You didn't say the H, so that's that's right. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> um, um, so the, yeah. the question is, uh, I know you came in a little bit late, is something that, that was uh, 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 working for you in your business now that you didn't work for you last year. So something that you did last year that just didn't work and what you're going to change this year to make it work. Me. I did not get anything you said. Did you like, was no, that just me, me or could you? Okay. <laughs> yeah, he cut out. Okay. I was like, I didn't, I, okay, something that didn't work for me last year that works for me this year or what? Yes, it's something that you, you did last year in your business that you figured out that didn't work and how are you going to change it this year so that um, you get a different result? Okay. Um, well, I feel like also like with Jana, um, last year um, my husband took over the manager position and he's like Jana like he's super super nice and the employees are like very like he's my friend he's my homie and like we're gonna come to work and have fun so like now he's like figuring out that they'll take advantage of that <laughs> so like he's had to um do that okay I don't have to be the mean person but I do have to be professional and I have to tell them like where those expectations are so this year my husband and I started meeting with our employees weekly to implement what we would call our culture um, 
And with that being said, it basically includes our expectations and what they look like. So like um, when you walk into uh, jumps and tents for events, um, we're just, our culture isn't to just sit around and not do anything. You know what I mean? Because um, one of our values is um, we, are, we take initiative and one of our guys at one of the weekly meetings said, we work like a boss, even though we're not a boss, but that's like, we don't have to wait for the boss to come and tell us what to do. And so kind of incorporating those values um, into our daily lives, as well as like providing the expectations at the very beginning um, and not like kind of sweeping stuff under the rug. Um, I feel like that will help a lot this year. Um, and um, I feel like one thing that I should have done from the very beginning was like be an LLC. I don't know how many people are sole proprietorships, but I was a sole proprietorship and I was like, I'm little, I want to just do this. Um, and then switching over books was just a nightmare to an LLC. <laughs> So I would definitely recommend getting that figured out right away with your accountant. And um, I feel like last year um, we were just kind of winging it, but this year we have more uh, goals in place um, and what we're going to do and what we're not going to do. So then that way our expenses are um, figured out from the beginning of the year as opposed to the end of the year. Um, and one thing I'm, I'm learning about right now, because our January is just horrible, um, is next year I'll probably pay our expenses, all of our expenses up to maybe mid-March. So then that way we'll have enough for payroll because we want to keep our guys employed year round um, instead of laying them off or cutting their hours uh, between okay. December and February. And I uh, where you are located. I'm in Texas. She's and, in West Texas. Huh? Yeah, she's in West Texas. Yeah, I'm in West Texas. Like t yesterday, we had like four inches of snow. So that really killed us like this weather has just been crazy um and so i i was doing expectations based on last year's numbers for january and they were nowhere near that and it kind of had to do with weather as well as with covid so i feel like next year i'm going to pay um ahead even though we paid some stuff ahead like our insurance we paid that all in full, so we don't have to worry about a monthly payment every At month. But sixty dollars over. I want to do more of that throughout the year, so that way. You know, we're not so so we don't want to cash flow price ourselves um, out for the but, year. Um, but um, that is where that's are you located? Our, 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 um, yeah, um, uh, Northern California, Sacramento, and then uh, just one of the things as well is uh like uh, for instance bouncing angels uh you put a 200 hundred dollar deposit down with them and uh you know just tell them whatever date or uh what month you want your uh slide to be ready by and they're pretty you know flexible we've had a council stuff before and you know they were able to work with us and uh you know switch it over to something else if, if you know that needs to be a lot of the manufacturers will, will work with you especially if you get in early you know once June, July hits and you're trying to get water slides, you know, as usually every year is a, is a problem, but for whatever reason, you know, last year with everything going on, everybody was sold out. Cool. Um, Alex, uh, I know you sit there on the side. Can you tell us on, on the insurance, um, uh, what have you learned from last year that, um, you can do different this year insurance wise? Well, I guess insurance wise, the um, something that I think we learned 
you know, not only at the end of last year when I came back, but also just you know, throughout the year was um, you know, educating people about what's covered and what's not covered on their policies. There was a lot of um, misinformation out there, just misconceptions about what was covered, what was not going to be covered when COVID hit. Um, you know, that was something that was that was very eye-opening. Um, also, then you know the amount of paperwork that we're having people complete to you know reduce their sales or uh, you know even trying to get them into a new carrier was just too much information. We chased a lot of people away from that standpoint. Um, so that was a big thing for us uh, that we're definitely going to change for this upcoming year. But you know just making it more transparent for the for the customers because I think that was something they were very frustrated with was why do I have to provide all this information? And, you know, Ishmael brought this up last week. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think that that's something that we definitely need to do a better job of, you know, whether it's putting videos out so you guys understand what you're buying or, you know, letting you know what you could buy uh, because you're, you have an exposure somewhere. And, um, you know, that's something that I plan to do this year. Um, Hopefully that answers the question. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, what, what I would like to know is, um, you, you said there's uh, people that don't know what's covered and what's not covered. So can you give us an example of one or two things that um, really stood out that people didn't know that was covered? Um, and I'm sure it's to do something with COVID that they think it's loss of income, something like that. So what is, uh, give us an example, the, the, the most important one, or maybe a second one or a third one. Uh, we have just that in the Marine policy, a lot of people who had the loss of income coverage on the inland Marine, they thought that if they weren't operating, they were, they were gonna get that reimbursement for that money. And that's not how the policy was just designed to work. You, know, you have to have a physical loss in order for that, to, that trigger to, to pay you. So. You know, explain that to people, even just having the inland marine policy to begin with, uh, because they thought that, oh, I have a general liability policy that pays for bodily injury and property damage, but they don't realize that that's, that's property damage to someone else. Uh, you know, you have to have a separate policy for your own equipment, and, and that was something that they didn't even realize they could add on, and it's very inexpensive normally if you buy it as a package, but, you know, if you're not thinking about it, then that's something that our staff should have done a better job. Like Ishmael was talking about, like we should know better. Uh, we know what you guys need more so than you guys know what you need sometimes. So a lot of times we have to help you and say, hey, well, have you thought about covering your equipment? Do you have commercial auto insurance for your vehicles? Uh, because you're not covered using a personal auto policy. So, you know, that's a big thing that people think that they have coverage and they don't. And, you know, again, that goes back to us as the professionals say, hey, you know, you guys have an exposure here, you know, you have cyber liability coverage that you should look into or workers' compensation. Um, you know, there's, there's a bunch of little things like that that people don't consider, but if you just presented it to them, you know, they might think about it and, hey, you know, we probably should buy that. Um, but of course, there's insurance, no, way, no, even myself included, I don't like paying for insurance if I don't feel like I need it. So, you know, I think that's something where you had to say, you know, this is something you should consider, but if you, know, you wanted to reconsider it later on, then you know, we can have that conversation that I'm at least going to at least put in front of you to make that decision. So um, if the one of the biggest uh, problems was people thought they had insurance for loss of income, mm -hmm. what can we do different um, after obviously this COVID is over and we move forward? Um, I'm sure you're going to get a lot of questions about that. Okay, how can I insure for the next COVID? Um, is there something that you're going to do? Is there something that we can do about it? Uh, what should we do? Uh, so to my knowledge, there's not a product out there that's going to pay for any type of a virus like this. You know, this is something that it was kind of like terrorism back in 2001. You know, people didn't see that as an insurance, an insurance exposure at all. Um, but it took, you know, the, the Twin Towers getting taken down for people to realize that, yes, this is something that we should insure against. Um, so... Maybe there'll be an insurance product for it in the future, but you know the biggest thing is just understanding and asking the questions, reading the exclusions on the policy. You know when you guys are, are buying the policy or just looking at the quotes, and ask questions. You know a lot of people just they just buy the bare bones minimum. They just like oh this is what somebody else has, this is what they told me to get, and they don't ask any questions beyond that. And you know as the business owners, you guys are signing a contract with that insurance policy, so you should know your end of the contract as well. And asking questions is always going to be a good thing. So would you really tell us, um, as of now, there's not really a product out there that's going to 
um, help us in the next COVID situation um, to recover some of our losses? As far as the losses, no. I mean, it's hard to ensure lost income that, you know, again, you, ha you don't have any rental value to losing a, a piece of equipment. You know, your, your sales could go up, you know, it could go down. You know, we, we had many customers that actually doubled or tripled their businesses during this time. And then we had others that you know, obviously lost a huge percentage of their business. Yeah. So it's, it's, um, it's a mixed bag, you know, that I don't know if there ever will be an insurance product for that. I know that there's uh, like event cancellation products and stuff that, that we're definitely paying out. And they, they took a lot of claims this year, you know, the big festivals and things that were canceled um, just because of an event cancellation. And, you know, maybe that's the route that people go towards buying that event cancellation insurance, but I imagine it might be a lot more expensive than it used to be just because of the claims that they had this past year. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, cool. Any questions for Alex? Alex, what, what percentage of, of companies, and I am, I'm not asking about for you to share, you know, uh, sensitive information about your company, but, you know, my question is, do you guys have, you know, a percentage of companies that they decide not to be insured, you know, in 2020 compared with 2019? Yeah, yeah. It was pretty, I don't know what the exact number was, but of the number of people that either didn't, or they didn't renew their coverage or they just canceled their policies, it was probably, I don't know, 40%, 50%. A lot of people just held off in, from renewing coverage in 2020. They said, we're just not even going to worry about it until next year and see what, what happens. Um, and then they ended up renewing towards the end of the year because they ended up getting more jobs or something. So they ended up having a six month gap of, of insurance, but um, I think that this year you'll find that the people that stuck around that made it through it or the ones that are feeling more optimistic because their state's open. Uh, I think that you'll see a lot more people that are just more cautious, but also a little bit more aware that, hey, there's a big opportunity out here. Um, you know, if you know where to look and you know how to, to market it correctly. So, um, you know, it's it was shocking, though, the amount of people that said, hey, look, I'm at 20, 30 percent of what I was doing last year. You know, because they went out to the big church events or the big corporate events. But then the other guys that are doing the backyard parties are saying, hey, man, we're having record months, you know? So um, it, it was it was interesting to see that. Uh, Vanessa, I don't know if you're busy with a baby, but I would like to know what you, what, um, what you have to say. I'm always busy with, with the kids. <laughs> but you, um, you have a voice, so let's hear it. I would say right at the very beginning of the, sorry, about the, uh, right at the very beginning of the shutdown uh, is when we got ERS. Before that, it was a nightmare when we, when we were handed off the business. Hang on. I got a screaming child. Sorry. So I would say the thing that we really, that really helped us is, um, when, first, when we got ERS, we decided against uh, the biggest package, so to speak, that they have. Um, and then I realized that there was the option that you could basically get water slides with it. And that's what saved our butt. We would have had zero rentals until late September had we not had any water slides. Because when we bought our business, the previous owner did not want anything to do with water slides. I thought that they were too heavy, but I, I actually found out that our dry combos are as much as our current um, wet dry combo. So um, I would say that's probably the biggest thing that we took away last year. Um, what I would do differently is tough for me to answer. I mean, we're still pretty new. Um, I feel like we finally have a really good employee um, that comes in to work instead of comes in and talks on his phone. Um, I don't know what I would do differently. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a good step from last year. So that's great. Um, it, all right, so I, I went through basically everybody except um, Mr. iPhone. I don't know. Uh, Mr. iPhone, can you say something? Mr. 
By the way, he don't know his iPhone. Hey, uh, you missed me, Kobus, but uh, it's all good. Um, okay, really why don't you go ahead? <laughs> so yeah. that's, that's what, what, did, what didn't work for me last year was um, I took on a lot of the work myself and uh, with a an helper. And uh, at times I felt like I was just burning myself out because I wanted to be cheap and not get extra help. So after that, um, I decided to get a lot more help. And uh, and just so I can just focus on the business more instead of working in the business, and uh, it actually helped a lot. We we are doing we do backyard parties, and um, yeah, that so yeah, that that's pretty much it. Um, and another thing I would suggest is build uh, a closer relationship to um, companies that are near you, because you will. <laughs> Ishmael shaking his head, but uh, you eventually will need their help or could use their help. Um, and yeah, for sure. That's great advice, Mike. Thanks. Yeah, great advice. Uh, Mr. Reed, how are you doing, man? Pretty good. How are you? I'm doing great. Welcome. And um, thank you. Thank I'm, you for having me. Yes, sir. I, I'm really interested to know your take on. Um, last year and what you've done and didn't work. So I, I've been waiting the whole time to ask you, but I know you were busy, so. Um, Sorry. Um, Sorry, I actually went, I went skiing and I thought I was uh, 20 years old again and uh, threw out my back. So I'm, I was getting, uh, I'm getting therapy. So I was getting therapy. So thank yeah. you for uh, being patient. Um, this year has been an interesting year. I've been in the industry 21 years now. Um, we started with backyard parties and evolved to uh, in the events industry. Um, I think our biggest, um, I think Al uh, hit it in, in early in the conversation. Al Sanchez made a comment regarding, um, you know, how people are coming together and um, how we came together in our warehouse with a lot of, um, a lot of startup and smaller companies actually helped us but it also helped us realize that our business was solely on events so a, a few of you guys that are on the phone that only do events we we weren't ready for the uh, we weren't ready for uh the you know the birthday party or backyard market we just weren't set up for it our trucks our our labor or just our marketing nothing was set up and we didn't know how long it was going to last, if it was going to be three months, six months. So when everybody's talking about water slides and shortages and industry shortage of water slides, I think it was all new to all of us. But I think it opened our eyes a lot um, and it's opened our eyes to help. I mean, my business has been um, mainly working with companies, um, mm -hmm. working with party rental companies throughout my area. So my competitors are actually my allies. So we work together. Um, I supply, um, I think 90% of my business is party rental companies. So 10% would probably be more on the, uh, you know, consumer. I deal directly with the consumer, but um, we get subcontracted. Um, we're a black label company. That means you don't see Vet Depot, my company out there, you know, promoting and so on. I think we learned from this that we cannot do that. Uh, we cannot be that um, under the radar company or that company that just deals with party rentals because what happened to us, all the party rentals stopped and then we didn't have, we didn't have any customers. So um, where the backyard was booming, it was, it was great. Um, you know, we took on, we, we made a huge mistake we we bidded on the CDC tent sites, all the all the sites for the drive-throughs for the testing sites, and you know we stuck to our guns on on pricing, and you know we lost it, and uh, we only got a few. I think we got a handful, but you know overall in Florida there's over you know there's tons of sites, and we could have been at least generating income through this whole this whole time if we would have kind of, you know, worked with them a little bit 
I, I stuck to my guns and I stuck, I, I stick, I stuck to my rack rate because I, again, nobody knew it was going to be this long. So um, I was one of those people that did buy, um, um, was fortunate to buy a few good pieces that, you know, during this, these times. But I think most of all, I've learned a lot from, you know, like Al and uh, other companies that are around. And, you know, we, we realized that, you know, the backyard party is where we all started. Um, and at the end of the day, I mean, if you guys, I don't know how many of you guys have been around, um, but there was a company called Jump for Fun many years ago. And that's how I got in the industry because Jump for Fun actually sent me a, a bounce house with a chicken wing in it and a, in a, in a sock. And I end up somehow being in the, you know, in the industry now with, you know, over a couple hundred inflatables and, and, um, and 20 years into it. And I can tell you if I would have made any one decision this year, I think I, I would have said, I, I want to open up a, an event division to deal with, I'm sorry, a party rental division to work with houses, backyard birthday parties and, you know, and work with, you know, a lot of companies there's a lot of companies like al i can you know uh, that is in my warehouse that we work with anytime i needed something i just call al and say hey al can i get you know 50 chairs or vice versa al calls me and says hey i need a blower so it's kind of good to you know go back to your grassroots and say hey you know maybe open up a division to service that 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 outlet you know and I mean, there's, you know, at the end of the day, like, I don't see Al as a competitor at all. I see Al, I mean, we're, there's thousands of people in Miami, Florida, and, you know, we, we collaborate together to see how we can get more market share and convince people that are not playing, you know, that not doing parties, but they're doing a party at a, at a baseball field, or they're doing a party, you know, somewhere else other than their backyard or, you know, at, at a park. So, that's basically my take on on what I've done wrong as far as um, not being prepared for the backyard market. We did pivot. We did pivot as much as possible, um, doing tents and selling tents and renting tents. But I think our biggest market, um, what we did is there was a lot of parades in South Florida, parades where people would just drive around, get in cars and and celebrate that way. And people would light up and in caravans of 40 or 50, 40 or 50 cars. And they would drive by and say, you know, uh, happy birthday or whatever the occasion was. And we set up our trailers that we use for our trackless trains. And we set up about four or five trailers and we did, we created floats from it. So we did a super float. We did a happy birthday float. We did a, a Christmas float. We did, um, a Hanukkah float, we did a Halloween float. So from that, we actually created a market within uh, within our city that nobody's ever had is a float market. Mm -hmm. And all we did was take props that we had in stock and add some decor to it. And we were able to, um, we were able to expand. We did over a hundred events. Wow. Um, you know, during uh, the COVID, we did hang it up because, you know, we started, we just started getting calls again and we started doing small events, not huge, um, but we started getting busy during the holidays. So we did, uh, we did park the trailers and we did need the trailers for other things. So we, you know, we gave it a good run, but it kept, it kept my guys, it kept payroll. It kept, you know, kept them going. Um, it was a high priced item. Um, so that's something that we, did as a pivot point but again if you ask me what i did wrong definitely was not ready for um survival and survival at uh, that was you know the, the backyard birthday parties where everybody was doing something in the backyard yeah well i i don't think uh, we are any of us could have been ready usually you say after three or six months worth of um, revenue or operating expenses and um, it um, I mean we way past that 
But um, I think you missed one thing. Uh, what about the movie? Uh, I know you have an outdoor movie um, business too. Oh yeah, we also yeah I forgot about that because uh, we we re retired that as well as the movie theaters opened up. We opened up a drive-in movie theater. We have inflatables, but we also had our LED screen. So we opened up a drive-in, uh, forty-foot drive-in, and came up with a COVID-ready plan that basically gave um, customers um, a way of getting out of their house. And they basically the tick. We created a ticketless system where they just come up. They don't even have to roll down their window. They scan. They they actually scan the barcode through the window. They buy their ticket, obviously, online. And they scan the barcode. They go in. Um, as they, they're watching the movie, uh, or I'm sorry, as they're parking, there's a big barcode right in front on the screen. And you scan the barcode. And that um, will show you the menu of the food items, that of the food trucks that we have. And then the food trucks would actually deliver the food. You would order the food. And the, and the food trucks would deliver it directly to your car. So you never have to get out of the car for anything. The only thing, obviously, um, they would have to get out of the car for was to um, basically go to the bathroom. And then we had CDC guidelines on the bathroom. Our, we have portable restrooms. So we rent them. And then we, um, we had somebody cleaning them and disinfecting them after every use. So other than that, I mean, we did pivot that. That was great. Um, one thing we did do is about uh, almost 20 something graduations. Nobody could do graduations last year in June. So anybody who has, um, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're basically halfway through the year now. So anybody who has screens now, I would recommend um, inflatable or non inflatable to start thinking about, you know, pushing your screens, you know, already to the schools for graduations and, um, and, and try to push them out that way and try to help. Um, that's, that's a good way to reach to your schools and, and they, they have multiple graduation, different levels. So that'll bring some income. That was great for us. But again, the movies down here in, in South Florida, some of the movie theaters opened up, some of them closed down. So it's kind of like, we're still in the, you know, we're still in the, you know, we're still in the uh, waiting game. Yeah. I, if I can say so, something about about Alex, uh, for you guys that don't know Alex, Alex is basically an Ismael, but in the in the big event business. This guy is always looking to do something, how to make money. It's it's crazy the way that his mind works like Ismael. Ismael is always looking, you know, where's the money? Where's the money? Where's the money? And one thing that I love about Alex is that he freaking always pick up the phone. And always he tried to say yes. It's, it's, it's amazing how a guy, you know, that has so big projects, sometimes you call him for one table and he make it happen. And you say like, a, wow, you know, this guy is, he, you know, he, 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 his vision is like a, today is one table, tomorrow is something else. And that's something that I have learned about this guy because he's, he's always, you know, I, I have feel that he gives me the same customer service when I need 20 chairs or when I need whatever extra that he gives to the guy, to the city that call him. If he don't pick up the phone, he call me back. Sometimes, you know, I'm sorry, Alex, but I'm going to share. Sometimes, you, you know, he say, hey, man, I am in the boat. What's up? And it's like, a, bro, it's a Sunday. You're in the boat and you're calling me back. Enjoy your family, whatever. But, it, but it's like that. And, and, it, and it's amazing that, that, you know, that a guy in his level of, of you know of, of business he 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 take care of every customer he call you back and that's something that i have learned from him as well so that's something that i i think we should, we all should learn you know well i think uh, thank you al for those kind of words but i mean overall i mean i, I met corvus uh, when he came down to miami i was uh, fortunate to take him out to to um I think lunch or dinner. What did we do, Corvus? I forgot. Yeah, I, uh, we did one. We did something. <laughs> I forgot. But um, you know, I one of the things I was very impressed with was that you know that um, how he's put this together and made. Um, I'm I'm in many industries, but what he's done tonight 
and, and this open table. And I hear Al all the time talking about it. And, and, you know, Al's a very, uh, you know, he well, well-spoken Al travels wherever he, Al talks to the wall. If he has to, Al knows how to, he is great, great, great. And I think, uh, I, you know, we're, we're talking about each other because we're in the same market. We're in the same, you know, we're, we're technically competitors in our same building, helping each other out, building our own business, whether, um, I, I, believe it or not, I mean, as big as you could be, you, you always need help from i mean every single day i always believe that competitors um you know sunny sunny banks has always been my competitor right and me and him have helped each other for many years so i mean for us i think that building the business um together and helping each other um it's very important so i mean as well as helping our customers but one thing i really want to uh point out is what corvus is doing um bringing us all together, you know, I just want to, I mean, this is my first time really on this program or uh, on this uh, thread on this zoom call. Um, I think it's important. Um, I think it's great because our industry doesn't have the support. Um, I think, I think IAPA needs something stronger for us. I think we all need to get together. Um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a very challenging time for, for a lot of businesses. I think I've spoke, um, I spoke to uh, Dana a couple times and we've I've talked to a couple of different people on this call a couple of times. And, and this industry has definitely going to be, it's going to change. And I, and I know it when it comes back, it's going to, I mean, everybody on this call is going to make a lot more money because I think it's going to come back a, a very strong. But mm-hmm. with that being said, I think we're, I'm not sure how far away that will be or if that's going to be soon, but, Regardless, I want to thank Corvus for actually ha- hosting this call and, and doing what you do, because I know it takes time to, you know, it, it's an event within uh, an industry. Yeah, so, I, I appreciate the kind words. Thank you, Alex, and thank you, Al. Appreciate that. Um, who else want to um, say something? We, we're going to have to wrap up in the next 10 minutes or so. Is there somebody that I haven't asked yet um, that wants to uh, give us their thoughts? Yeah, I, I was uh, Mr. iPhone, but I, I didn't realize I was Mr. iPhone until I logged in on my PC. Um, so okay. just very, you know, I want to kind of just piggyback on what Al and what Alex uh, was sharing, you know, for me, you know, I think about where I was a year a year ago, and um, I had was considering moving into a warehouse, and I was thinking about how I was going to expand in my business. Um, and one of the things that we did last year was move into a warehouse, which coincidentally I share also with Al Sanchez and Alex Reed. Um, so, you know, there's three of us uh, from the same warehouse here, which says a lot about what what goes on in that warehouse, right? So. Uh, you know, I think that, you know, the opportunity that I got just moving into that warehouse uh, really helped me um, expand one thing, definitely expand our business, um, you know, the expand our assortment and also see things a little oh. differently, um, you know, from from a competitive perspective. Um, you know, I've always I've never really uh, thought as um, people in our industry as competitors, um, you know, and I've always used you know, shared and, and, and used everyone kind of as partners. Um, but it's it, it's been completely different. Um, we actually have another gentleman that I was talking to today. Um, one of the things that I shared with him was, you know, we ha- we're in at an, we are at an advantage uh, with the amount of equipment that we have in one location. Um, you know, we, you know, we all know each other. We all talk to each other. Fortunately, we all get along with each other. Um, you know, we have the opportunity to just, hey, you know, this equipment's available, uh, you know, for, because he owns it, you know, can, can we use it or, you know, what, you know, can you rent it to me and we can just, you know, grab and go, um, you know, which gives us the opportunity really to, uh, you know, play with our market, right? Play with what your customer wants, because, uh, you know, for example, if, if you want to get into um, into interactives and you don't have an interactive, well, you can borrow our interactives or rent our interactives. We're literally in the same warehouse and, you know, you can just take it out and see how often it goes out. Right. Add it to your website and and, and do things a little differently. So, you know, uh, 
from where we are, you know, today and, and where we are, you know, where we were a year ago and where we are today, I mean, it's completely, completely different. Um, you know, we've grown significantly. Um, you know, I think this time last year, I had like six water units. Um, you know, we've more than doubled that. Um, you know, obviously we had a, you know, great back to our business last year was a surprisingly, surprisingly, um, you know, busy, uh, you know, obviously July was our best month as well, um, as you know, many others in the industry, but, um, you know, we, we, we learned, you know, I learned definitely from a logistics perspective, from a staffing perspective, you know, what to and what not to do. Um, last year was my first full year, um, you know, in this business and, and it was great. It was definitely a fantastic year for us. Um, you know, so we, we, we definitely learned a lot, um, you know, uh, and you know, it's, it's been good. So, um, yeah. Well, uh, that's a great, um, thing. It, it seems like the, uh, what's going on in Florida, especially when I went and visit there, I could see that, um, you guys definitely are working together and that there's a lot of synergy going on. Uh, we really should talk about that to, uh, maybe in one um, of these roundtables um, stuff. Uh, Al, you need to think about that, um, that we get you guys together that's in uh, that warehouse and let's talk about it one night. What's benefits, what is things that doesn't work and things that uh, people can might think I mean, there's a lot of uh, places across the country that could uh, possibly um, use what you do now, especially with us having still have to go to um, this COVID and to the end of it, there might be uh, some things that you guys know that we don't know. Let me tell you, I think it's a great idea. Um, and, you know, I am, I am a, a, a guide of faith, a lot of faith, and I, and I, you know, I am I am a believer that this year is going to be a good year for us. But if that doesn't happen, uh, you know, being around people on the industry every day, you know, seeing, you know, talking to Danny about Danny, how do you see this? Uh, Alex, hey, what is going on? You know, uh, we have, you know, a couple more, you know, hey, Roman, hey, what is going on? You know, um, um, actually, we are, we are in the same market. We serve the same city, but I think each of us have their own niche. It's really funny because, you know, when I, when I see Danny, I say, Danny, Danny, Danny customer is like this. Mine is a little bit like this. You know, Roman is a little bit like this. So we, it's really interesting because when you are suffering, you have people around you that at least, you know, they motivate you. Hey, how many rentals you had this weekend? Man, I have, I have only two. Oh, I have, I have four. Oh, you have two more than me. You know, oh, perfect. You know, there, there's, there's, there's hope. You know, it's mm -hmm. not about, oh, that, is, that have two more than me. Let me see what, let me see how I can take those two from him. No, it's about to see, okay, Danny, you know, how, how you are working. And it's really funny because we share information about each other, like, like we are partners, not like we are competitors. Mm -hmm. It's funny. The other day, you know, Danny was, you know, I was talking about, about even hug with him and he, take off the phone and he's say, okay, yeah, look, look what I sent, you know, and he started, you know, sharing with me all his marketing. Why? Because he know that I have the best interest for him at the same time, yeah. because I have proved it. When he need me, I am there. When he, when I need him, he's there. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an amazing, you know, atmosphere. Okay. Of course. So, so, so let, let, let's do this. Uh, why don't we use that as a topic for next week? And then um, I, I will work with you and you can talk to Alex and uh, with some of the other people that's in your uh, warehouse. And let's get them at the head of the table and uh, that you guys can, and I'll talk to you a little bit about it, that we can um, uh, um, see the things that you guys did and what you've learned and um, that these people can come with questions. So I will uh, post earlier about it that people know and that um, they can learn from you guys. What do you think, Alex? Sounds good, sounds good. Okay, uh, I will work with you um, tomorrow um, and then we put that together for next week. I, I think that would be a great uh, opportunity to um, share something that you guys came up um, and, and Sonny, um, and maybe we can have Sonny there. Um, uh, we don't know. I, I would like to have him there and Alex, because the two of you have a lot of experience that you guys can help 
um, share with people. Um, so I, I will work on that. Uh, any other people wants to add to what we've said tonight or have any questions for somebody else? Um, please go ahead. Hey, Kobus, how about you? What, uh, what did you do different? What are you going to do different this year from last year? Yeah, um, well, my negative thing that I had is I've never advertised on Facebook. And um, I actually don't advertise a lot. I don't spend a lot of money on, on Google AdWords and, uh, and especially not on Facebook. And last year I spent not a lot, but about $15,000 on Facebook for like three months or two and a half months, something like that, um, testing it. And it was a total um, loss. So I kind of feel I lost all that money. And um, this year, I'm definitely not going to do Facebook, Facebook uh, again. I don't think it brings me the right customers uh, to my table. Now, what are you doing different right now that's working versus last year that you weren't doing? I'm going to... It's a two-part question. Yes, I'm going to continue doing uh, AdWords and uh, be more specific with AdWords where I'm advertising. And that's about, that. go ahead. You said you were, do, no, it's different. What What were you not doing last year that you're doing new this year that's working? We talked about fails, what about wins? What I'm gonna do different for winning? No, that you're doing now, right this minute. What's a win that you didn't have pre-COVID? Because that was the whole point of this topic, remember? I said, what, yeah. what are we doing to win right now differently than from a year ago? And then I fell. Yeah, my, my thing was about um, the, the advertising that I failed last year with the advertising. And this year, instead of spending money on Facebook, I'm going to spend it more, uh, on Google AdWords. Okay. You know, Mark hasn't said anything. He's just sitting there looking all pretty and stuff. Mark, what do you got, dude? A win? that you weren't doing a year ago and a fail? I don't have an answer for that because I haven't done anything different. We're dead in the water right now here. Um, my mind was on overload on the last meeting with you guys. I've never spent a dollar on advertisement of any type. Uh, Google AdWords, Facebook, anything. So, uh, to, I guess you could say I'm a virgin to every bit of that, but I've succeeded for 17 years. Have I uh, advanced as far as, say, Al grew as fast as he has? No, uh, I didn't. Um, do I know anything about any of that stuff? No. I know nothing about uh, AdWords, uh, landing pages to make people come to me any of that stuff. I do believe I would not advertise on Facebook because of the way Facebook's, let's just say Facebook's economy is going right at this point. I think Facebook is not the place to be doing your advertisements. Um, I think we're going to see less and less and less Facebook users searching towards our industry or any industry. Um, I do believe what Koba said, uh, AdWords with Google might be a better way to go. Do I know anything about it? Nah, I'm not even gonna kind of kid you guys. I know nothing. Mark, what's your, uh, what's your market? <clears throat> Excuse me? What's your market? What, what's your target market? No. I just do strictly backyard parties. Okay. We don't really have events here. Um, even, even before COVID hit, uh, like you can see my shirt. It says downtown street parties. Okay, I okay. was chairman. That's that's our county, any of the county parties. Um, I was chairman of entertainment on that board for eight years. Uh, you know, when you do an event, and only six, seven thousand people show up, and seventy-five to eighty percent of them are people who are over fifty years old. You don't got the kids. Um, and, and all our street parties just kind of went away. We don't. We have a fair that comes once a year, a fireman's fair, and you can't get in there and do anything. They bring their own, you know, company comes with the fair with their own inflatables. Um, 
we there's corporate parties and there's stuff like that but it's you know it's everybody's a is different and at a corporate party i'm just going to throw out an average they want five pieces that's really worth about 900 to a thousand dollars for 400 bucks and they'll find somebody to do it here so i have stayed with the backyard parties i just said to hell with the the big events or trying to get them um i actually on our last conversation here i think or maybe in private message i told his mail that i was going to be selling my big pieces uh, most likely my 100-foot obstacle course, and those big beasts are going to go. They're dust collectors to me. They just sit in my warehouse. Uh, water slides are hot here. Um, I was averaging 13 a day on the weekends during COVID. Uh, July, June, July, August was my hottest months. Um, and then it died off when the second round of COVID started hitting. Um, so I can't say what I would do any different because I don't know. I, I, I think I, I need guidance, but I need guidance in a slow way that I can understand what I'm doing. Okay, cool. That's, that's why we hear every Monday night. So um, just continue coming Monday night. Um, anything, anybody else? So we're going to uh, finish in the next five minutes or so. Is there anybody who wants to add to the conversation tonight that we can end? Yeah, I'd actually like to say something else, Kobus, because there's a couple guys in here that are from Florida, and there's a couple guys I see that uh, throughout out in California that's talked to me left and right. Um, do not think for, at least on my part, that it goes unnoticed that I see how successful you guys go, and I'm actually very proud of that, to be a part of it, to help you, or to give you advice on my end. Um, I've helped quite a few people, and I see them fail. But there's some of you sitting right here looking at me right now that, ha that has called me and asked, hey, how do you do this? Or how would you handle something like this? And they're doing it. And I've heard them talk about it in these groups. And to me, that makes me feel as good. If that's what I can give to this industry, then I'm happy with that. I'm very happy. But I just want to say that, uh, and those guys know who I'm talking about. They're smiling. Um, that I'm proud of how some of these guys grow, even the ones I don't know, you know, that, that talk about starting out with two or three units and all of a sudden, boom, they blistered up to 15 units and they're renting them. You know, that's good. Good for you guys. You know, you keep that gusto going. That's what we need in this industry to keep it going is to have the ump to, to continue the drive to keep going forward. I just want to say that. Thank you, Mark. Um, anybody else who wants to add to the conversation for tonight? Um, who wants to give a final thought? Hey, I just want to say that um, sometimes, you know, when you're stuck, just reach out, reach out to someone. I mean, I remember when I was trying to wrap my vehicle, I actually reached out to Mark and he gave me a couple of advice and he goes, you know something, just go with your gut. You know, people are going to criticize you on how you're going to wrap your vehicle what you're gonna put, just go with your gut. Same thing with Ishmael. I mean, I call him for anything, he answers, he gives me advice. I actually took a, a leap of faith, I could say, um, to spend, you know, a couple thousand dollars on new units when, you know, the market was crashing. Um, so we're, we're ready. My fail was that we were trying to get into commercial and we're a backyard party. And we, we boomed as a backyard party this year. Um, and that's the reason we actually went and spent, you know, a couple thousand dollars on water slides and combos for, you know, for this year. And we actually closed December and we were thinking to, to be closed until March. But the market here in Oregon, um, I mean, I, I'm receiving calls right now. And it's like, hey, you know something, we're going to open back up. And last week was our first week that we opened back up and we're, we're excited. We're, you know, we're pumped up and it's going to be a great year. It's just looking for those opportunities that are out there. And sometimes we're afraid to, you know, take that leap of faith, but 
just go with your gut. All right, um, that is uh, all for tonight. I think uh, we're almost two hours busy. I try to stay within an hour and a half, but I think we had a lot of uh, conversation tonight. And um, remember, we're gonna be here every Monday night at the same time, depending on where you are on the East Coast to the West Coast. <coughs> so please um, um, remember that. And um, uh, please tell your, your friends that what we do here on Monday nights, I'm gonna get uh, speakers coming in, uh, talking to us. Uh, I just want the year to start off and um, I will make those announcements as we go along, but it's gonna be every Monday night, um, starting at 5 p.m. Pacific um, Standard Time, all the way to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, I will be here every Monday night. All right. Hey, Travis. Thanks very uh, much. And thank you. I, don't know if any, I don't know if anybody else has asked you, but how are you and Heather feeling and how's your dad doing? <laughs>